Welcome everyone to Coaching in Session. My name is Michael Reardon and I'll be your coach this evening. So today we're going to be talking about failure and how regret can also play a role. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, do all those things that videos like, but let's get into it. So today the blog came out and it was about failure versus regret. And for some reason, my my versus blogs get a ton of views and it's because people oftentimes don't think the opposite of what they're thinking. So for example, if they're thinking about their purpose in life, right? They might be thinking like, well, I need to get a job that pays well, but then they're like, is it in line with my gift, my passion? And when I compare the two, people are like, wow, that makes perfect sense. And then now we have failure versus regret. Just another versus blog. And it's going to be talking about the same type of things. What's the difference between failure and what's going to be the differences between regret? Now, when we take a look and we say, okay, which one would you rather have? Would you rather have failure or would you rather have regret? And for me, I find it interesting that people typically say failure. Okay. Well, then why are you not going out and doing more? Oh, because I'm afraid to fail. So they're afraid to fail, yet they won't enact action. But then they are more willing to have a failure than have a regret. But now, without any inaction or any action, just inaction, people are reaching regret. So it's interesting. They're afraid of failure, but they don't want regret, but they hit regret more than they do failure because they never attempt because they're afraid to fail. So if you're afraid to fail, how do we get over that failure, right? How do we get over that feeling? And for most people, it's just going to be jumping head first. And I'm going to give some examples after I show you the blog for today. And for regret, this is one of those things where it might be too late. Now, just because I say might, it doesn't mean it is. Might is going to be situational, right? Because if you have a regret when you're in your deathbed, that's not going to be situational. Your time's up. But if you have a regret that you wish you went to college when you, when you were 20 versus when you're 45, that regret can be fixed because we can get you an education at 45 and you can graduate college. But for the people who are putting off until there's no more time, that's when regret kicks in. So let's get into the blog. Let's talk about failure. Let's talk about regret and just the differences between the two. So if you're new, head over to revenconcepts.com. Then we want to go over to the resource tab, go over to blogs. And then of course, failure versus regret is what we're going to be talking about today. So failure is going to be one of those things that happens when we attempt something that we might not be strong at. And we can be really strong too and fail. Like for example, let's use who, uh, uh, the Olympics, right? We have like Hussein Bolt. He's one of the fastest men alive and he can go in and run and win. Now, let's say one year he gets second place. He failed, right? He did not get first place. He did not get the gold. But does that failure push him or does it deter him from going after more in life? For people like Hussein Bolt, it's going to push him. He's not going to say, well, I'm going to put up my shoes and I'm going to not run anymore because I failed and I'm afraid to fail. People don't understand the work that that man has put in over the years before he was in the Olympics. All the training he has done to accomplish what he can accomplish. Hard work, failure, defeat. He has experienced that and it made him stronger. So for the people who are afraid to fail, let me ask you a question. If you're so afraid to fail, why are you 
even in that realm. For example, Hussein Bolt again. He could have been afraid to fail. And he could have said, you know what? I'm not even going to run. I'm just going to sit on the sofa and I'm just going to watch the Olympics. And I'm not going to compete because if I compete, I'm going to fail. So why do we put ourselves in a situation where we have a chance to fail? Guess what? The people who put themselves in situations where they can fail are the people who can grow. So for the people who don't put themselves into a place of failure, where failure is an option, you're not going to grow. So you have to be willing to fail. You have to be willing to make mistakes. You have to be willing to fall down, get hurt. And the only thing you have to do is get back up if you want to succeed. Because failure sucks, right? It doesn't feel good. I understand that part. You might fail a hundred times, but it doesn't define what you're capable of and what you're going to accomplish in your life. Now, my clients, when I am dealing with someone who's failing on a consistent basis, there is a reason why they're failing. Maybe they're not preparing themselves enough. Maybe they just need to pivot. So they're doing the wrong thing. And they just have to pivot to something different. And it's not running away. By by no means, if you do something different, it, it, it does not mean you're running away. For people who are doing something, let's say they're in a specific career. And they're in this career. And all of a sudden, they have some drama at work. And they say, you know, I don't want to come to work anymore because... I have to do this presentation and then my boss told me it was terrible and everyone was laughing at me. And then now you have a stigma on you saying, wow, that experience was less than favorable and I don't really want to feel that again. So I'm going to run away. There's two options there. The first option is to run away. And that is going to be running away from your insecurities, your failures. That is not what we that is not what we want. Now, if you are in that job, same thing happens. But you just don't like that job. Your boss is negative, your coworkers are negative. When you go into work every single day, you just feel like this is just not for you. You were meant to do something more in your life. Now, when you do that that um Let's call it a, a, a speech or, or, a, or a seminar or whatever you do, a presentation for your work. And let's say it didn't go like you want it. And same thing happens. Your colleagues don't like it. Your boss doesn't like it. Maybe you don't get the contract. It could be a wake-up call right there. You can say, you know what? I don't like this job. This job is not for me. And I don't care about that presentation. This is just a wake up call for me to understand that I am meant to do something else. I'm meant to do something more in my life. There's a big difference between the two. And even though it seems so subtle, one is running away and one is running towards a new you, a new, better you, a new type of success. So in that position, in that situation, you had a failure but you saw the regret is if you stayed in that career long term. Because if I stayed in that job long term, maybe they gave me a good 401k, the match was great, I got health insurance, I, I get I of course I got my 2 weeks off every single year. The job wasn't too difficult, it was just not fulfilling. And guess what? I can choose security versus a better life. So maybe down the line, 10, 20, 30 years, I'm in this career, the company goes under, bankrupt, everything is lost. So what do I do? Do I say, oh man, now I have no job, now I have no work. You're going to start to regret not getting out of that comfort job and 
doing something that was going to be more stable, more secure long term. Now, there's nothing going to be secure 100%, of course, because you could have your own small business and that can go under too. But at least if you have your own small business, you're going to be the person responsible, not someone else. So regret is going to be talking about that. And this blog is going to be talking the difference between about failure and regret. Because regret is defined as feeling sad or repentant um, and you're going to be dis- you're going to be disappointed about something. And regret typically happens when you're unable to do the said task anymore. Maybe you're a little bit older. Maybe you have pain in your knees or pain in your hips or your back is not as strong as it used to be. And you have a regret and you say, you know, I wish I ate better. I wish I went to the gym more. I wish I took better care of my body because now I'm feeling the pain of adulthood. I'm feeling the pain of having and neglecting the one body that I was given. And it's interesting that people regret not doing something that is common sense almost, that is outright doctors say, do this, do this, do this. But then again, people are like, "Eh, I really don't want to because it is too much work and it's too much pain. And then we have the second part of regret is going to be talking about missed opportunities. So you're going to regret maybe not traveling in your 20s. You're going to regret not having kids at an early age. And now you're 45 and you're expecting to have kids, but now you're having complications, whether it be miscarriage or not finding a a suitable partner. So you have regrets. And this blog breaks down the difference between the two. And I'm going to get a little bit into it in the sense of would you rather But this blog is a must read for anyone who is teetering on the edge of, am I failing in life toward success or am I failing toward regret? It's important to understand the difference. So would you rather fail or regret? I often tell myself or ask myself that question. Would I rather fail or have regrets in my life? And be honest, I would rather fail. I would rather fail every single day and learn from my mistakes so I can have a success. Because I understand probability. And probability is going to look something like this. If I fail 100 times and every single time I fail, I make adjustments, it's only going to be a matter of time before I succeed. And it could be true for anything. Let's say I start a business. My first business fails. Okay, why did it fail? Let me figure out that reason. Once I have that reason, I can say, my business failed because of this. And then I just have to figure out how to fix that reason. The reason is fixed now. And then I start my second business. And then that second business is doing well, doing well. And then I fail again. Why did it fail? I pay attention to what's happening in my failures. Most people fail and then cower in a corner saying, oh, that sucked. I don't want to do or I don't want to feel like that anymore. And it's interesting. You want success, but you don't want to get hurt. You want the glory and the fame, but you don't want to put in the work. So if you're not willing to put in the work, what are you willing to do? Most people wish They fantasize over good things happening in their life. And they say, well, only if something good happens to me, then my whole life will change. They apply contingencies to what they say, to what they do. And they expect a great outcome. But when the great outcome doesn't come, they're hurt, they're depressed, they're distraught. Why is this happening in my life? I thought I was doing everything I was supposed to do. Well, if you didn't succeed, it means you haven't been doing everything you were able to accomplish 
able to do. So finding the fine line between, okay, I'm willing to fail so I can succeed eventually versus I don't want to end up having a life full of regrets, having a life full of, I wish I should have done this, or I could have been so much more. Now, age is going to be something that you have to understand is fleeting. But just because age is going down the drain, maybe you want to call it that, going away, the sand in the, in the hourglass is just going, you know, down to the bottom and there's only so much sand left on top. For that way of thinking, right, we look at maybe we have more time behind us than we do in front of us and how much more we're able to accomplish, whether it be I have 10 more New Year's, I have 10 more times to see my parents, things like that, especially if we live out of state. When you start to see time for the quantity versus in just years, you start to say, hmm, maybe I should take better and more appropriate actions. Because that's what, that is what regret is going to happen. You're going to regret the things that are too late. You're going to regret not visiting your parents. You're going to regret putting them maybe in a nursing home if the nursing home does a bad job. You're going to regret not spending more time with your children when they're growing up. And now they're off doing their own thing. You're home. <clears throat> You're home. But guess what? They're off doing their own thing now, too. And one of the quotes I read early on, probably in my 20s when I was still in college, there's going to come a time when we are so busy growing up that we forget that our parents are growing older. Because when we're young, we see our parents and they're youthful. They're running around, they're happy. And they have smooth faces, of course, because they're young and they're vibrant. And then they get a little bit older. You get a little bit older. Now you want to go live life. You want to go out and experience the world. You want to travel. You want to do all these wonderful things. But when we look at mom and dad, now we start to see they're a little bit slower. They have a few more wrinkles and gray hairs in their hair. Their eyes are sunken from working. Their hands are calloused from all the hard work to try to give you a better life, a better life than than they ever had. Because many parents sacrifice their life. Similar to how teachers sacrifice their years in order to educate the generations to come. Sadly, when it comes to to the school system, even though teachers do that, it doesn't necessarily mean the children are going to grow up and to be something significant. Now, we can always hold on on the air of confidence and hold on on the air of positivity and optimism. Sadly, you can be as optimistic as you want, but it doesn't mean someone is going to change your life for the better. You can be as optimistic as you want in your relationships, whether it be family, friends, And you can have the best intentions for someone, and yet they'll do exactly what they want to do. And you might call that regret. You might call it a failure on your end for not being able to establish a relationship or rapport with them. And for me, when I was probably 18, 19, I was more so thinking Well, how can I do things in a certain way and figure out, all right, I want to make a difference, but I also want to make money. I was 18. 18. 
So then, I, of course, I was working in finance and accounting at the time, and I was making good money. I was investing. I was doing well. 18, I remember my financial advisor at the time, He, I, was, I think I was 18 or 19 when I went in his office, and we put a good amount of money down. And he said, I wish I started investing when I was your age. Was that a regret for him? No, because he's doing well. He just started a little bit later. And in life, you're going to start at different times. Success is going to reach you at different times. You're not going to be successful at 18, 21, or 25. Now, of course, we look at Mark Zuckerberg. He created Facebook when he, I believe, was 23. Or maybe around there, 23, something like that. We look at Elon Musk. How old is he? And we say, wow, Mark Zuckerberg, he's a billionaire. He's not even 30. But I'm 33, and I don't even have a fraction of what he has. And now you start to regret. If only I created Facebook. If only if I did this. Only if I did that. But the thing about people who are successful, they have an idea and they go with it. And I'm sure he had a lot of iterations where he has failed in the creation of Facebook. He's like, up, oh, that didn't work. Try something else. People have wonderful ideas in their mind, but they're too afraid to try because they're more concerned about failing than about succeeding. And it's very interesting when someone is more concerned about failing than they are about succeeding, because then that leads to regret. So which one would you rather? Would you rather fail a hundred times and succeed once? Or would you rather have a life of no failures? You came out life with, with the same body and the same type of condition, but you don't have any successes because you didn't attempt anything. So when you're old and decrepit, now you have regrets because there's a problem in life. People go through life tiptoeing, trying to get out unscathed. But when they finally realize that they're tiptoeing to death, only to realize that it didn't matter how careful they were, that outcome was the same. It was death. No one's going to be able to live forever. We have a finite amount of time. And how you use that time is going to be important for what you can accomplish. And whether regret holds true for your life or a failure acts as a stepping stone toward your success. It's interesting. My name is Michael Reardon. I'm a mindset coach here in Austin, Texas. If you have any questions, you can email me, coachingaccession at gmail.com. If you, if you haven't, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to all those things that videos like. And until Wednesday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, take care, and I will see everyone in two days. Take care.